Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Kunzman, Managing Editor of Contagion, and uh, this is a first part of some ongoing video interviews that I'll be doing as part of uh, Contagion's AIDS 2020 coverage uh, happening right now. The International AIDS Society, like so many other uh, medical organizers and uh, major meeting providers throughout the year, has gone virtual this year. And um, nonetheless, has an excellent and very varied and incredibly crucial uh, agenda of topics and discussion points to share in the scope of treating, caring, and preventing HIV. And um, today I'm actually joined by Dr. Kathy Kretikos, who is the Director of Infectious Disease at Howard Brown Health. And uh, Dr. Kretikos is actually going to be talking with us about maybe one of the most timely and topical uh, discussion points we'll have this week uh, regarding Fostemzivir uh, for HIV, which actually received a new FDA approval just late last week, just in time for us to discuss at AIDS 2020. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and the bright study outcomes uh, that evidenced its uh, benefit for uh, patients with HIV-1 infection. And first and foremost, before we get into any of that, Dr. Kretikos, how are you doing? Very good. Thank you for asking. Great. That's, that's great to hear. And um, maybe let's just start with this bright study data. Can you kind of walk us through a little bit of, uh, you know, we don't need the entire layout of exactly what evidence for Fostemsevere, but can you tell us a little bit about what you took away as the most critical findings? Well, I, I think uh, one of the very important aspects of this is that this is actually an oral agent. Uh, that we can use now for patients who have highly treatment experienced HIV. Uh, this is a patient population, individuals who are living with HIV who are highly treatment experienced and have uh, come to the point where they have resistance or intolerance to many of the drugs that are on the market. Uh, we are very blessed to have so many different types of drugs available for patients, but uh, we do have a patient population that cannot use these drugs or uh, are not able to use them in adequate uh, numbers to really have them be effective. Um, so because of that, we really are looking for agents that are effective for this patient population. Uh, this is an oral agent, but probably the most remarkable thing about it is it's a whole new class of drugs. It is a first in class of uh, uh, this type of viral um, uh, attachment inhibitor so that it interferes with the attachment of the virus to the CD4 cell. And we don't have any other uh, agents like that. Wow. Wow. And it's, it's always uh, fascinating to me, uh, regardless what disease space, uh, when we talk about a novel application for therapy and, um, you know, something that was particularly emphasized, I think, uh, upon its approval, of course, is not only that, but uh, the oral application, too. It's kind of seems like the best of both worlds where, um, you know, you're assuring more patient willingness and adherence uh, to the therapy while also breaking ground on this pathway. Yes. So. Yes, and I, I do want to emphasize that it's also uh, a fairly easy tablet to take. It is twice a day. There's no uh, need to take it with or without food. Um, and it's, it's, you know, a relatively manageable size. So all of these aspects make it a very user-friendly type of medication. And uh, that's so important for this patient population who uh, typically has many other medicines that they have to take at the same time. So, you know, it's challenging for them to be on a complicated regimen, and this is really a simple agent to add in. And you're alluding a little bit into what I was going to ask next, Dr. Kretikos, regarding this patient population, what they're going through. I mean, there's such a, a strong connotation to being, um, you know, a, a previously heavily treated uh, patient with HIV. I can't help but imagine that's incredibly burdensome, not only on, you know, their their reliance and, and hope in you know, making that breakthrough and in, in having suppression, but also just the quality of life that means, you know, it, it seems like mental health is such a huge factor in HIV, right? I imagine they're some of the more susceptible ones to burdens in that field. Absolutely. And uh, many patients feel that, you know, they hear so much of the press about single tablet regimens, how easy it is treat HIV, how it's uh, no longer a death sentence, all wonderful things and all true. But for uh, this patient population, they feel to some extent that um, they don't fit into that. They've been not abandoned, but that they 
uh, you know, they're beginning to lose hope. Why, why do these regimens not work for me? Why can't I have something that will suppress a virus and keep me healthy, uh, which is so, true for so many other patients? So um, with the BRIGHT trial, we had really significant response with the addition of this medication, uh, even in patients who were literally uh, not able to, to combine it with a very successful background regimen. Uh, there was what we call the non-randomized cohort, individuals who literally had nothing left to add to their regimen that was effective, and yet this drug was still uh, helpful for them, a very a, a powerful drug for them. So um, that's, that raises a great deal of hope, and it's not false hope. It's something that we can offer to patients as a real option.